Hi guys, this is Third Party and you're watching Get A Point TV. Salut à tous, c'est uh, Scorch pour Get Point. On est au Hope Festival et uh, j'accueille aujourd'hui uh, Third Party. Hello guys, uh, how are you? Very good, It's happy to be back. Great, great. Uh, how was your uh, Creamfield set? How was our Creamfield set? Uh, amazing. It was our first set back since COVID. Yeah. So obviously we were excited. The crowd was excited. Yeah. Everybody was excited. Great. So like it, <laughs> it couldn't fail basically. It was, right. it was, yeah. One of like, one of, uh, it made you very appreciative uh, the time away. So it was one of my favorite gigs ever. I yeah, it's yeah. super great. Yeah. So uh, here is your second, second set. Yeah, and our first international, and also very uh, good. Oh. The crowd was really good. Everybody was into it. I think, yeah, again, people are just, people are ready for music right now. Yeah, yeah. super great. Happy so uh, we will uh, talk about uh, your uh, labels, release and release deep. Yes. Mm. Um, so uh, my question will be. Uh, Uh, how would how would you describe the sound of uh, release and release deep? Uh, what what kind of sound uh, are you uh, looking for? And uh, for example, uh, you, uh, we can uh, talk about uh, Ed Cube uh, with his uh, incoming four track EP on uh, on release deep uh, on um, release or release deep. So uh, it's on release. Is that correct, Alfie? It's on release. Yep. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, awesome, can you tell us a couple us about of questions uh, in there to yeah. unpack? Um, Release has always, for us, been, uh, I think, progressive is the word that we first use when we try and um, explain the whole um, concept of release and release deep. Um, it's always an ongoing process, but at the moment, release is definitely um, more on the progressive side of music that we would play out as a third party. And then release deep is, is catered more towards maybe a slightly more house Um, vocal led mm. slightly deeper in BPM um, kind of sound so that's so that's what we're trying to do a bit, bit more for the after party so yeah. stuff that wouldn't be in a third party set um, but would maybe be what we would play at a third party deep set okay um, and that's kind of the, the, the difference um, as I said we're always um, looking for new music we're always sort of like upgrading the overall concept of release but that's kind of I would say for now But yeah, the, the best uh, way we would do it. The head QBP is like bang on the sound that we're looking to we're looking to do for the yeah. uh, for the label. So uh, it's more like a club versus festival so kind yeah, of basically, music. Yeah, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Club, more beats rather than big moments. You know, like when we play our like our live set or the big of the festival set, we're looking for to play more of our the vocal tracks and okay. stuff. Mm. But on the label, we want to try and get the the more beats the club side back a bit more yeah okay so that's the idea no, so oh. as well, thank you is a fantastic producer yeah. uh some of the best music we've heard club based so progressive um pk actually yeah. um knew him and got in, him in touch with us um so we're very happy to have him on the label and hopefully it's the beginning of something mm. really good bigger and bigger Oh, he, he deserves, uh, and, and then even like you, people need to check out his live set. So he does a whole live set. Um, he's a he's a head of a lot of people in that department. Um, yeah. Even you know we're working on our live set, and, but Headcube really knows what he's doing. So mm. I want people to go and follow Headcube. Yeah. yeah. Hello Pete. Hello Headcube. <laughs> um, talking about, talking <coughs> talking about your music now. How did you spend your lockdown? It, did you made uh, Did you make music or did you? Uh, made a, a standby uh, did you uh, stop uh, harry got a dog <laughs> uh, and i didn't and that was, that was probably the biggest news no uh, and but bigger than that he got engaged bigger than that oh. he got engaged congrats so we'll, con we'll say con congratulations to harry um magnificence has just ruined the interview so <laughs> yeah. shout out Hello. to him <laughs> amazing producer but, yeah, yeah. No, but needs to learn to knock on the door Yes, no, we've done, um, uh, for us, um, COVID, for a lot of people, was sort of just readjusting, re-looking at um, where you're at with the music, mm. um, what, where you want to go. Um, so, and, and a lot of people had more time than normal as you think about it. Because mm. normally you're in the cycle yeah. of gig, yeah. 
yeah. making a new mashup, making a new song onto yeah. the next gig. So it's like it becomes this just conveyor belt that you can't mm. get off. Yeah. COVID was like, oh, off we got. Yeah. We now be able to talk about it a little bit more and work it yeah. out. You um, stopped uh, everything. Yeah. Literally, literally stopped everything. Um, It'd be a bit more experimental. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. You can try. I mean, and we've got the the new uh, vocal led music we've got is definitely a slightly more experimental for us. Um, mm -hmm. Little very yeah, compared to the last two albums we've done. Okay. Uh, and we're going to be showcasing that at the Olympia show, Ooh. October the 9th. Still a couple of tickets left, so we can't wait for that. Mm. We can't wait to do that show in general. And yeah, we're aiming to play I don't know five six new songs there. Mm. Um, yeah, can't wait. So uh, it leads to my uh, third question: What about the next album? No, 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 no album talk. No, no, too, too stressful. Album okay. Yeah. No, they they're the best thing, but they're the worst thing. Is is the mm. combination of once you commit to it, you know, you're in trouble. But mm. once it's done, it just feels uh, probably the best feeling you could have yeah. when you drop an album. So to have done two, we feel very lucky. Mm. Um, But no, we're not discussing that because we feel like because of COVID and we're in this slightly more experimental stage, doing an album isn't the right time. Mm. It's releasing singles, seeing how it sort of fits with people, seeing how we feel about it. Then maybe next year we start thinking about a third album because we're definitely going to want to do another one. Okay, so uh, the, the tracks, uh, the, uh, the tracks uh, you will play uh, will be uh, on the album? Um, at the moment, no. Okay. But who maybe. knows? But who knows? We have some new music. <laughs> we said we got five or six new ones for Olympia. Oh. Yeah. Great, great. Um, talking more about uh, your music, uh, I would like to um, ask you, uh, um, how do you analyze the evolution of your music? Because uh, your style I've, has uh, evolved since uh, our evolve, since uh, your first tracks. So uh, how do you uh, see your music uh, from, uh, from those time to uh, now? Yeah, it's deep. From the it's deep one. From, from the beginning. Release. From the beginning. Wow. So, Will you give your angle and I'll give my angle. <laughs> I think in the beginning, stuff was more club based, right? So, when we first were releasing on size, it was only really clubs. There was a few festivals. So, it was kind of like making club tracks, club bangers. And then we I feel like we developed more into the vocal led mm -hmm. stuff and songs and bigger festival music but we've always had a love for the club side as mm. well so at the where we are and then right back to now the new stuff that we're trying that we're making is kind of like a, a combination we're kind of going back yeah. a little bit more to the club side but with vocals yeah because that's the uh, best way i can explain it during your set you combine uh, yeah, those exactly, uh, yeah. aggressive yeah. electro sounds uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. and your vocals uh, yeah exactly yeah so The new tracks is kind of like back to towards the the beginning. It's like a yeah, it's a cycle yeah. again. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy. Explain it well. And your views on it? Um, yeah. What can I add to that? Um, yeah, I guess with the involvement of as Harry said, and then now with the live show, we're also looking into that, and that's been a huge new thing to learn. And it's been great when sometimes when you don't you know nothing, so you start at the beginning again, it like fires things in your brain again to have to, you know, really be motivated mm. again. So just even moving on to a different platform like Ableton and learning how that could be used for live performances and Harry singing as well and how we oh. can get him to sound good live, you know, because, you know, auto tune, not too much. Yeah. Um, no, he sounds fantastic. Um, <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's all of these things that as we're evolving and that probably happens with the sound. I just completely dish you there, sorry. But yeah, Thanks, no, it sounds fantastic. Not like I have to do it in two weeks time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, so uh, here is my final question. Um, oh, this, is gonna be, this is a big one. Yeah. I can tell. You're yeah. Uh, that was yeah. The last one was a big one. The last one is uh, the longest one, I yeah. guess. Um, I would like to uh, talk about uh, your, what you think about uh, the progressive house scene now, because uh, Since uh, the big collapse of uh, the mainstream progressive uh, yeah. scene from uh, 2014-15 mm -hmm. to now, uh, what's your opinion now about like uh, the underground scene, which is uh, uh, evolving uh, quickly? Um, and uh, yeah, your views on uh, 
on the scenes. I think that when there was like the big bubble of EDM, we didn't really feel like we were too much like really EDM mm. at that point. And sometimes we'd go to first and be like, oh, we need to play more like, like this, like this. And, we, and then eventually we didn't. So now that that kind of like real sort of the EDM sound has regressed a little bit, we kind of feel in the same place, to be honest. It's like we have, we had like our fans then, like a small hardcore following. Yeah. And that's what we have now as well. So even though the scene changed a lot, for us, it stayed very similar, personally. It was like the same people, the same core fan mm. base. So we've always tried to just play to that and, and make the music that we think that those people like and that we like. So okay. That's what we did. Yeah. Okay. And your, your views? Yeah, no, I mean, we could go on for hours because yeah, we discuss yeah. kind of directions and genres and mm. music all the time. Um, so, you know, you could talk for hours about genres, but ultimately you've got to make what you love. You've got to keep one eye on the culture. So you've got to look at the way that people are enjoying music mm. and you've got to keep one eye on what you love. Because as soon as you start making music that you don't love too much, mm. you're not going to be good in the long run. So it's kind of finding the balance between those two, I think, all the time. And that's how you progress. Okay. So uh, thank you guys uh, for this interview. Uh, good luck for your uh, next uh, show, next album. And... Uh, on se voit bientôt sur une autre interview de Guetapan. Tchuss. Merci.